welcoming all zoo enthusiasts. It's time for another zoo adventure at the Memphis Zoo. Not too long ago, I showed off the zoo's unmatched collection of big cats. And today, we'll be staying near the entrance to explore one of the most unique types of exhibits you'll ever find at a zoo. It's the Memphis Zoo's nocturnal building, Animals of the Night. An area that I actually had no intention of filming when I came to Memphis. Mostly because trying to film in a nocturnal building usually looks like this. But those plans quickly changed when I walked into the building and saw that the exhibit lights were still on. As a result, I was able to get some great footage of a host of seldom exhibited small mammals, including what just might be the rarest animal in a North American zoo. With that said, let's turn off the lights. Located to the right of the zoo's main restaurant near Primate Canyon, the Animals of the Night is a rather unassuming building which gives few hints to the rare gems found within. As you enter and your eyes struggle to adjust to the darkness, the signs encourage you to follow the trail of glowing bats on the floor. The first exhibit it leads us to is home to Tank, the very speedy Brazilian three-banded armadillo. Although their appearance may not suggest so, armadillos are relatives of anteaters and sloths, two other South American natives. The three-banded armadillo is the only species of armadillo capable of completely rolling up into a ball, which allows them to effectively use their keratin shells for protection. While I was here, I was able to capture what I imagine is a very rare interaction between Tank and his unlikely roommate, the endangered pygmy slow loris of China and Vietnam. Don't let that adorable face fool you, the pygmy loris is the world's only venomous primate and can dish out a painful bite. Next door lives a rainforest dwelling prosimian, the Pado. If you want to talk about what's rare in this building, the Pado is a good place to start. As of now, they can be found at four American zoos, and only a handful more worldwide. Pados are the largest member of the Loris family, and like the Pygmy Loris, they are frequent targets of the illegal pet trade. The good news for the Pado, however, is that despite being rare in captivity, they are not currently endangered in the wild. The third exhibit along the first row was signed for a kinkajou, who never made an appearance, but we will see the species later in the video. Along the next wall is a larger multi-species habitat featuring owl monkeys, who didn't show, as well as several Lynn's two-toed sloths, famous for moving so slowly that algae sometimes grows on their coat. This is actually beneficial for the sloth, as it provides them with additional camouflage in the rainforest they inhabit. For my last sloth fact of the day, I'll share that sloths are surprisingly strong swimmers, and often prefer to drop into rivers to move between territory rather than descending to the ground. Rounding out this South American trio is the six-banded armadillo, considerably larger than the three-banded armadillo we saw earlier. Six-banded armadillos are natives of the South American grasslands, and despite their inclusion in the animals of the night, are actually more diurnal than most other armadillos. Moving along, the centerpiece of the building is a long exhibit with viewing on both sides for Siba's short-tailed bats, bulldog bats, and Egyptian fruit bats. Across from the bats is an exhibit that I apparently forgot to film for two species, the first of which is the Greater Bush Baby. A South African native named for their vocalizations that sound like a crying baby. And on my visit, I didn't see their roommates, the Aardvark. But if you follow the zoo on social media, you'll be familiar with Grogu, who was born at the zoo in September of 2022 and has been hand-reared by zoo staff, making his debut on exhibit this past February. Sometimes known as the ant bear, aardvarks are credited with having the strongest sense of smell in the animal kingdom. And although they share a taste for termites and ants, as well as some physical features with anteaters, they are most closely related to elephants and manatees. Special thanks to a fellow zoo photographer, Okapi2584, for providing these videos of Grogu, so please consider following her Instagram page for great animal photos and videos like these. 
The next exhibit over is one of the larger ones in the building, home to three species from three different continents. There's a red rumped agouti from South America, a sleepy hairy-nosed wombat of Australia, and finally, there's Shemp the Bear Couscous. A rare arboreal marsupial found in Indonesia and Sulawesi. You could be forgiven if you're not familiar with this species, since he is the only bear couscous on display in the entire western hemisphere. They are of course not at all related to bears, but get the name from their thick bear-like fur. Another thing that distinguishes them from bears is their diet. The bear couscous is strictly herbivorous, feeding on leaves, flowers, and in particular unripe fruit. As Shemp was showing off, they are at home in the trees, using their prehensile tail and grasping hands to move around the forest canopy. If nothing I've shared so far has convinced you to visit the Memphis Zoo, I hope you're enticed by the rare opportunity to see this unique species. Near the end of the bat exhibit is a glass tank for the specially adapted Texas Blind Salamander, built for an aquatic underground life. On the backside of this tank is another tank for blind cave fish, a tiny pigmentless predator found in the caverns and underground caves in Mexico and parts of the American Southwest. Next up, there's two smaller habitats for the large spotted gennet. I didn't see any action in these exhibits, but we will see this species before the end of the video. The next, larger habitat contains the shaggy, Southeast Asian native Binturong. Binturongs are one of only two members of the order Carnivora to have a prehensile tail. Despite their inclusion in the order, their diet mostly consists of fruit, although they will supplement their diet with eggs, birds, fish, and will even hunt the occasional small mammal. From the tropics of Asia to the arid savanna of East Africa, with tunnels full of adorable naked mole rats. And continuing on, there's a cave-like habitat for vampire bats. In addition to flying, vampire bats can run and even hop along the ground in pursuit of prey. The next species didn't really show on my visit, but I'm still going to take the opportunity to talk about the African Crested Porcupine. Contrary to pop culture belief, porcupines don't shoot their quills, but instead, when threatened, they will turn their back and charge backwards towards the attacker. Crested porcupines form monogamous pairs, and young will stay with their parents for an extended time, creating a family group. So for today's fun porcupine fact of the day, a group of porcupines is called a prickle. In the next habitat over, on my second trip through the building, I was just able to make out a ringtail, a small member of the raccoon family found in arid regions of the western US and Mexico. Moving south, the exhibit next door contained a southern tamandua. These mini ant-eating machines use their large claws and 16-inch long tongues to attack the nest of both ants and termites. And they are even able to use their keen sense of smell to avoid ant species with better chemical defenses. Living on their other side is the building's second porcupine species, the prehensile-tailed porcupine. These are New World porcupines, which have a few key distinctions from Old World porcupines, like the crested porcupines we just saw. For one, Old World porcupines are terrestrial, while porcupines of the New World are at home in the trees. In addition, an Old World porcupine's quills are attached in clusters, while the New World porcupines have their quills attached singly amongst their hair, underfur, and bristles. In the middle of the room is a smaller exhibit for another ringtail who I didn't see, and as you can see we've now wrapped around to the other side of the bat exhibit, and from this side you can see it extends into a pocket-like cave. Opposite the bats is another of the building's larger habitats that I found to be much more lively on my second trip through the building. The exhibit's four species include the kinkajou, the other member of the order Carnivora to have a prehensile tail. I also saw another six-banded armadillo and another red rump agouti. Finally, through the darkness, I was just able to get a glimpse of an owl monkey, 
another rare zoo species that makes this building an absolute must-see. The same could be said for our next species, the endangered red slender loris, a shy prosimian from the forest of Sri Lanka and India. Although these numbers have likely changed, as of 2015, Memphis was home to five of only seven total slender lorises on display in the US. This little guy or gal was quite curious about my camera and it was definitely a special moment for me to be noticed by such an incredible, rare animal that most visitors would be lucky to even see. Since they have no venom to protect them like the slow loris, slender lorises specialize in remaining completely motionless when they feel threatened. Our final new species in the building is the banded palm civet, yet another species that can only be found at a few other zoos in the country. The second to last exhibit in the building had another lesser anteater. Memphis's tamanduas include Mr. Wendell, who was apparently found roaming the streets of Houston, there's also his mate Winnie, and their son Wicket, who was born in 2021. Like several other species on this tour, tamanduas are often victims of the exotic pet trade, but on the bright side, they're still relatively common in the wild. And finally, wrapping things up with the large spotted gannet, one of at least seven species that are exhibited in multiple exhibits throughout the building. Close relatives of the civet, gannets may somewhat resemble cats and are even known to hiss and purr like cats, however they are not felines and instead belong to a group of animals known as viverids. Spotted gannets are known to stalk and pounce on prey, sometimes leaping straight down from an overhanging tree branch onto their unsuspecting victim. And after that, you're cast back outside into the unforgiving sunlight. Thank you for joining me for our journey through the Memphis Zoo's Nocturnal House, a building where something unique lives behind every corner. Our next adventure in Memphis will be equally as special, as we'll be exploring the incredible theming and special star animals of China. To answer today's question of the day, comment below what is the rarest animal you've seen in a zoo. And now, enjoy a short preview of the next exciting edition of Exhibit Tours.